Hello, my name is Magnus Renbergit, and welcome to this screencast about the Groovy Lighttable plugin. The plugin provides uh, rudimentary Groovy support uh, inside of Lighttable, and the features are, I guess, comparable to the features you will find in the Groovy console that ships with Groovy. So let's just get started in writing some Groovy. For the plugin to be able to uh, recognize your editor as a Groovy editor, you either have to save uh, the editor as a .groovy file, or you can use the command set current editor syntax. So if I select Groovy, I should be able to write some Groovy expressions. So let's start off with something fairly simple. And I can evaluate that using the either the evil eval edit contents command or evil form in the editor. And basically that means any expressions you've selected. So I'll just use the evil form command using command enter. So a couple of things happened here. Uh, first of all, it started a groovy client, which is just a pre-spawned uh, JVM uh, with a connection to whichever Groovy version you have on your path. And I would recommend you use something like uh, GVM to install your Groovy library. And that way you can easily switch between Groovy versions. Uh, once it's got a connection, it evaluates the, the code in, through a groovy shell and then it returns the results which are ultimately displayed in line. So of course I could write multiple statements like so. And if I evaluate everything then it shows the results for that statement as well. And if you happen to have statements that write something to standard out, that is shown in the light table console. Alright, so you get the general idea. And let's do something that's a little bit more unique to this plugin. So if I define a variable a that's cool and I remove it and I use that variable in my next evaluation that actually works as well the reason that works is that it stores the binding from the results of the previous execution and that works an arbitrary number of times. Um, there are a couple of traps. One is if you actually define a variable. So if you think that this obviously works, but then if I try to use D and validate that, it will complain that it won't find D. And the reason for that is that t, uh, since it's defined, becomes a local variable of the run method of the script. And that's not really a limitation of the plugin as such, it's uh, just the way that uh, Groovy scripts works. I'm sure there's possibilities of uh, solving that, but I haven't really dug into that. Uh, it's a little bit more elaborate solving that. Right, so what about closures? Can I use that? Let's find a closure. Times two. And when I validate it, you will see that it's indeed a closure. And I should be able to invoke it. And yes, that works fine. Okay, um, next thing I'm going to show you is 
defining methods and then validating methods. And before I do that, I'm going to show you another command, which is the Groovy clear bindings command. So I can clear any bindings that's stored so far uh, for this editor. So if I do that and try to invoke the my double method, or my double closure, it will complain that it's no longer available. Right, so we have a clean slate. And now I define my double as a method. X times two. And when I evaluate that, it doesn't actually return any results, but it is actually still uh, available. So I can invoke it like so. And the reason that that works is that the method is stored as a closure in the binding. And illustrate that by using something that's unique to closures. I can carry the first parameter or the only parameter and then invoke the closure. And that works. And you could do more elaborate stuff. Let's say you define a math class with static my double parameter and two and let's say I store that in a new variable I can use funky groovy syntax to get that static method as a closure so if I evaluate all this you will see that my dog is now a method closure. So if I clear off this, I should still be able to call that, and that works. All right, that's pretty cool. Um, let's say you want to do some evaluations, uh, or maybe just explore and some third-party library on a Gradle project you happen to have. Well, that's actually possible as well. So you can connect to a Gradle project using the command add connection. Command shift C is what I've mapped it to. So if I select add connection and I select Groovy from the menu, I can select uh, a Gradle project and the plugin ships with a sample project which you can use. And on my Mac, that is located under uh, my home directory, under library, application support, light table, plugins, Groovy, and then there's a sample project. Okay, so now I'm connected to this sample project. Let's have a quick peek at that. The sample project has a build.gradle file. And one of the dependencies it has is the uh, Groovy Stream API. So if I want to... Sorry. <coughs> so if I want to familiarize myself with the stream uh, library, I should be able to do that now. So let's just import Groovy Stream and do something funky with it. Let's say we do something like this, x3 Five and map over that using a closure saying y and finally show the results. 
Let's see if that works. Yeah, it does. It takes a little bit of time. Um, and if it's the first time you actually invoke anything from this project, it will um, need to download any dependencies. So if you have lots of dependencies and transitive dependencies, it might take a little while before the results show. But once you've done it, it's pretty fast after that. Um, well, this code is basically something resembling the for comprehension in in Clojure, uh, where we iterate first uh, the x variable. Uh, so it starts with x like one, and then it's like one x uh, one times one from y, and then one times two, etc. And then the next iteration. We'll start with x equals 2 and multiply by all the values of y and so forth until uh, it runs out of values from x. Okay, this is useful for exploring third party libraries, but what if you want to explore the code uh, of your own uh, project? Well, you should be able to do that as well. And so we'll just create a new connection, we'll clear this, and we'll connect to the Groovy Stream project directly, which is just something I've cloned from GitHub. And to illustrate point just clean my project and now when I evaluate it will fail and the reason for that is that I don't actually have a stream class in my class path as of yet so to get that I will have to, to build my project and I'll just invoke a Gradle command for building it and I'll drop the test command just to make it a little bit faster so it takes a little bit of time doing its stuff and if I go back to the project now I should be able to evaluate yeah so that's pretty useful if you want to do the exploratory kind of testing uh, of your classes and um, yeah that pretty much concludes uh, this screencast and uh, I am planning to add uh, additional features to the plugin um, mainly in two kind of categories I'm gonna do more in terms of the Gradle integration it will be handy to actually run Gradle tasks from within the plugin and uh, we will be working on providing more REPL-like features to the plugin. So um, I would recommend you check out the uh, readme file on the uh, GitHub project and if you're interested in how the plugin is actually created I've got a small blog series uh, called a Groovy Lighttable Client, which you will find on the on my blog, which is called waiter.blogspot.com. And uh, if you any, have any questions, um, feel free to get in touch. If you have any um, issues, uh, then feel free to register issues on the GitHub tra uh, issue tracker. Uh, and even more appreciated is uh, if you have any uh, contributions you'd like to make, feel free to uh, submit uh, pull requests and I'll certainly have a look at them. Okay, well, um, thank you for your time and uh, hope you uh, give it a go.